ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له اشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه قال الله تعالى في القران العظيم بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون وقال تعالى ايضا يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في we start by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Him, we seek His forgiveness, and we seek His assistance. And we seek refuge with Allah from the evil that resides within our own selves and from the evil consequences of our own deeds. Whomsoever Allah has guided, there is no one who could lead that person astray. And we really need to remember that. I think it's, it's, it's crucial for us to remember that. And may Allah allow us all to be amongst them. When we ask, we, we need to know that this has already been, this salat that we're asking for is, is, is in um, the book that I'm about to talk about today. And it's very important that the guidance has been presented to us and it's crucial that we follow it and know that whomsoever Allah has guided, there is no one who could lead that person astray. And be confident with that know that. And whomsoever Allah has abandoned due to their own okay. desires, their own issues, their own arrogance, their own their own willful desire to be left, then there is no one who could be <coughs> that person astray. And we ask Allah to never be amongst such people. We bear witness that there is nothing worthy of worship besides Allah. He is one, unique in his oneness and complete in his perfection and incomparable to his creation. And we further bear witness that Muhammad is his last and final messenger. I wanted to stand in front of you today, inshallah, and do something that I don't normally do simply because of, of two reasons, and that is number one, there's benefit in it, inshallah, and number two, it's the it's 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 a it's the day before a special day for me, I guess you could say. Uh, which caused me to reflect a little and cause me to think back because tomorrow is the 3rd of July and as far as my life is concerned anyway 25 years ago tomorrow I took my Shahada so I'm here after a quarter of a century of being a Muslim and I know there are it is my brother who's been Muslim longer than me a bit but mashallah and may Allah keep us all um, under his worship it's, it's something where you want to think back to those days, because I, I grew up, and I'm not going to talk about my life too much before Islam, I don't think it's important, I think that there are better lives to, to research, but I did want to talk about one of the first times that I journeyed through the Quran, and it's interesting because 25 years later the impressions that I had are still quite quite similar in terms of the, in terms of the Quran, that this book that we have in our possession has so much to offer us yet we really don't reflect on it. And I remember going through it for the first time. And back then it was the 90s and we had cassette players. I put my, and those brothers who grew up then or who lived then know that we don't have them anymore. But as soon as I put in the cassette, in my player, I heard, Bismillahi al-Rahman al-Rahim Alhamdulillahi rabbil Al-Rahman Al-Rahim Maliki Yawmiddin Iyaka Na'abdi wa Iyaka Nasta'in 
اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين انعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين. I want you brothers to think and kind of imagine having lived for 21 years of your life growing up here. Grew up in Nova Scotia, Canada, is, 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 Turtle Island is Turtle Island anyway, crudely enough. From Nova Scotia all the way to the western part of it. And we grew up here and lived here and never heard the name of Allah. Can you imagine growing up, not hearing the name? Forget the concept of Wahda, Bula, Sharika, and all these uniqueness, oneness, all those different, all these different things. We never even heard the name of Allah like that. So to hear that for the first time in such a way, and of course the reciter that I heard is much better than, than me, and I remember his name, and may Allah bless him, I think he's passed away. Um, then you listen to the wording of the Quran, how it flows together. And you realize that this could not have just been from a person. Just the, the, just the I don't like to say the design of it, just the layout of the words and how they're put together. That's the first thing I noticed. How things seem to, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Allah Rahmanir Raheem, Maliki Yawmikeen, Iyya Ka Amir Wa Iyya Ka Nistaheen. How it all seems to kind of go together like it's supposed to be together. And you journey through it, and one of the things, because Shaitan likes to come to you as a convert, whispering to you, whether, whether directly or from your other people. And you hear that Islam isn't for everyone, that's what Shaitan wants you to believe. You're coming into some place where you don't speak the language, you're not an Arab, you're an Irish-Canadian, you know, whatever. <laughs> Landed here, mashallah. So you think Islam is not for you, you start to hear a different language, you hear go to the masjid, and then you read this ayah that says, Ya ayyuhan nas Ya ayyuhan nas u'budhu rabbakum Islam isn't for everyone. It's not. Oh, people! I think we're still people. Inshallah. Help so. Islam is for everyone. Ya ayyuhan nas u'budhu rabbakum waladhi khalaqakum min O oh, people, worship your Lord who created you and those who came before you. It doesn't matter what anybody else says. If Allah says Islam is for everyone, then guess what? It's for everyone. When Allah revealed it, when Allah sent it down to Muhammad Wasallam, it was for everyone. Ya One of the first ayat that I can remember. And I remember hearing about the prophets that came before me before Muhammad Sallallahu and having those affirmed, and I remember, but that was one ayah that stood out to me. Ya you and Nasr I'm supposed to worship Allah. It's an order. As a, as a new Muslim, as a 21-year-old kid, I took that as a deliberate order. So now no one can tell me that Islam isn't for me anymore. Because I can look at that ayah and say, oh, yeah, Ya you and Nasr Abdul Rabbakum, Waladi Khalqakum, Waladi Namiqabikum. There's another ayah that read, affirms that. When Allah said to us, Ya ayyuhan nas, again, Inna khalaqunakum min dhakarin wa unta. That these human beings that are running around here thinking they're cool, Inna khalaqunakum min dhakarin wa unta. Allah created us from a male and a female. Waja'annakum shu'uban wa qaba'ila li ta'arafu. And made us nations and tribes that we might know each other. We're not supposed to be, you know, and I've heard Muslims say terrible things over the years. We hide behind social media and we think we can say things. I've heard Muslims say things like, if I, if, if, I don't even want to repeat it really, but it just shows you how fast that we can go when they said, if I see a white person in Jannah, I'm going to leave. Muslims said that. What does Allah say? Inna akramukum and Allah best of you are the ones that are conscious of Allah. The best of you. It could be from anywhere. 
It could be black, it could be white, it could be Anishinaabe, it could be Arab, it could be anywhere. Inna akramkum inda Allah So you don't have to worry anymore. Because Allah will take care of that. Yes, you judge the good for what it is and the bad for what it is, but Inna akramakum inda Allah yat'akum Inna Allah alim khabir And Allah is ever aware of everything. You read this and you think as a kid, all the racial issues that you have in your country and your society and in your continent, and that's the cure for it right there. That this is the best, the best people in front of Allah are the ones that fear in the most, and they could be anybody. SubhanAllah. You look at that and go, how is it that this isn't printed on every on every out of billboard that there is? read this as a new Muslim and then you wonder, wow, mashallah. Then you wonder because you're blind. I am anyway. I was born without my eyesight. But I was never allowed to be told that I was blind in the house. My mom would say, you're not blind, you just can't see. So okay. So I grew up with that mentality. But I wondered how the Quran related to me in that way. Or did it even. And I was okay if it didn't because I didn't expect all the answers. I just expected the important ones. Allah said in an interesting part of the Quran, Habasa wa tawalla an ja'a And you know the story, and I don't have time to really go into it all, but Allah corrected the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, for his just turning his face away from a blind person. And I remember thinking to myself, why would you correct yourself for that? Like if you know someone is blind, you could just turn your face like that, and you wouldn't know you did it. So why would you correct yourself that way? So this has to come from someone else. And I had that reaffirmed with that ayah, because Allah corrected his messenger, وسلم, because of a blind person. There's another ayah, though, that even relates more to that. And Allah says to us, أَوَلَمْ يَسِيرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ فَتَكُونَ لَهُمْ قُرُوبُ يَعْقِلُوا لَبِهَا so all these years, my mom was right. It's not the eyes, it's the heart. Allah revealed Islam for everyone. From everywhere. If you're created by Allah and we were, then Islam was revealed for all of us. And 25 years ago tomorrow, I came to realize that the Quran only had that was for Allah and the Quran. Unless Allah Taala took you to the next level. Alhamdulillah, we are giving the salat and salam to the Khatim and the Nabiin and to Ali and the Prophet and the Salim and the Kathirah. There is one more crucially important part um, of my journey through the. Quran, at least my first one, and there's a lot more to it. I don't, I only have half an hour or an hour. Uh, this is normally a talk that I'm, that we give in front of a lot of people, and if you want, we can do it another time. But I remember growing up not knowing who to worship. You know, you you're told certain things, and you're you're brought certain places, and you realize that people around you don't really know either who God is, growing up like that. They have pictures and statues and people, and you pray to this person that way. And we're Irish, so Catholics, if there's any number of the roster of people that you have to ask for this or that. So you didn't even know the concept of, of Allah, and it goes back to what I said to you before. Can you imagine not knowing the name of Allah? Can you imagine not knowing who Allah is? And you open this Quran and you read, Wallahu alladhi la ilaha illa hu He is a lot of, there's nothing worthy of worship besides Him. Out of everything that the people worship, out of all the gods that the people have, whatever they might be, from silly ideas to silly people, Wallahu alladhi la ilaha illa hu 
is a lie and there is nothing worthy of worship besides him. That he is the knower of what is unseen and what is visible. And he is the ever merciful. He's especially merciful. He, there's no Rahman, there's no word in English. You guys know. Go into how Allah describes Himself. When my servant asks about me, I'm close. I answer your prayer. When you pray, Muslim, somebody actually listens. Somebody is responding. Allah says, Ujibu do you not know what it's like to not be able to do that? To spend the first 21 years of your life not knowing how to do that. The first 30 years, 40, 50, 60 years of your life not knowing that. Ujibu Just that alone can change someone's life. People think that when they pray, no one listens. This continent is full of people like that. Let them believe in me. Let them trust me and believe in me. Allah is saying He wants that. Just worship Him without any partners. You know, when you're created, a very interesting thing happens in that a place in Jannah is made for you. A place in Jannah. When you go to your graves, you see it. But there's a place in the other place as well. And may Allah allow us to choose Jannah. Because whenever someone takes their shahada, inshallah, that's what they're doing. And they say that the world has changed in 25 years. I think we still have to go to Jannah and we still have to please Allah. So really, it hasn't changed that much. اللهم إننا أسألك بأسمائك الحسنى وصفاتك العلى توفنا معنا بضر الداعين يا قهار يا غفار يا التواب يا الرحمن اللهم اغفر لنا وارحمنا وعافنا وافعنا وحدينا تبقى السلام قوموا إلى صلاتكم